again the format that we do this is more of like a discussion so it's not like a cbt nuggets or train signal so this is more like we're all sitting down discussing together you know learning from one another and just discussing generally about and uh, the topic that we're discussing for that week and so um it's not just one person speaking we're all going to be contributing <laughs> to to the things that we'll be discussing so spanning tree let's let's just take it from the very beginning spanning tree who wants to go first what's like your understanding of spanning tree i have a very basic understanding so maybe i can start off yeah please um from what i understand it's uh sort of like a so there's no loopback that occurs and that it kind of also measures um what do you call like uh the age or distance of connections um carry on um so I don't know much more than that other than like uh it's a way on the L uh, I think on the L2 layer. Yeah. I mean let me put a question this way. Why do we need span entry on in any network? So as as a so as a network engineer, you go out, you buy, you purchase your I mean you cur you currently have um your key, <coughs> your Cisco router and your Cisco switch. So you go out and you buy your Cisco switch. Um so you go out to buy your Cisco switch and for your for your enterprise. So you're configuring it, and one of the things that you're configuring on it is you're saying I'm configuring spanning tree on this switch. Why would you want to do that? What's the reason why you want to configure spanning tree for a switch that you bought that you're going to be installing uh, on your office network? What's the reason? Yeah, good one. So let's let's put that down. So let's go. So you just bought. So what 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 did you say again? Or what was the stuff again? Someone spoke now. Who, who spoke? What was the what was the thing you said? Someone someone made a point now. Was it Ferenc? Hopefully it's back soon. Yeah, but hello, anyway. sorry. Can can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, my internet no, connection. No connection. <laughs> can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah okay. So th this is what happened. So my internet connection just dropped out. <laughs> yeah. That started happening after my landlord upgraded our internet connection to fiber. <laughs> now all you got fiber now? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Boy, everything is now dropping now. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of fiber they've got, but <laughs> well, now we're gonna be a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not too sure but <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what's been happening now. Okay. So now you got your switches on your network. What's the reason why you want to go and say, when I'm configuring the switches, I will configure spanning tree on them. Why? What's your justification for that? To keep keep the um, the switch from sending it up. Uh, let's see, from sending out from more than one port, maybe. Um, no. Porting? No. I don't know. I thought that's what I said on there. You see, I think uh, Cisco make it complicated, but uh, in the uh, as simple as at the core network, pretty much multiple switches are connected to each other, and one broadcast, uh, one broadcast and signal can become a, a very, very, very complicated. Uh, uh, for the network because once when a, when a switch receives a message, all it does is send a broadcast for the network and if multiple switches are sending broadcasts, then all you got is a, a, a loop which basically drain down the bandwidth in the network. Yeah, very good one, very good one Remy. 
very very nice one so we'll come to discuss that one in more details again any other reason why 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 we will want to configure spanning tree on our network any other reason apart from the one that Remy mentioned so just for just for just to break it down a bit so what Remy is saying is this on our network we have uh, on a typical network nowadays you won't have uh, just one connection up to like the core net to the core of your network what you probably have is you want some redundancy so for example you won't want to let's say these are the switches that are connecting your computers in the office let's just say for example these are the switches connecting computers in the office and then these switches go up to this one which connects out to maybe a router that goes out to the internet so you want to connect the switches to the core of your network so most people won't just go well i'm going to connect this one here and i'm going to connect this one here most people won't do that what most people would do is they will have redundancy because if you do this what happens if in a situation this this link goes down hey can you show the picture yeah carry on carry on color sorry hey uh, can you show uh, i think you're referencing a picture and we couldn't see it oh you can't but, see uh... my screen anymore <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> sorry i thought yeah. you were seeing my screen sorry <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. can you see my screen now yeah right yeah so yeah so basically what remy is saying just to break it down is that if you've got switches on a network so these switches are connecting to to your computers and then you have one switch at the core of your network that's going to like connecting to a router and that's going out to the internet something so normally in modern networks you won't have one single connection going from the switches that your computers are connecting to, which are called edge switches, you have one connection going from that to the core and one connection going from here to the core. So what you want is you, you want some redundancy, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And what's the reason why we want redundancy? A failover if your link goes down. Exactly. I have an ability, right? Um, stuff like that. So. You want high availability on your network, so you have you probably have um, let's let's make this one yeah. So you probably have two connections from your head switches going to your core here, and two connections going from your head switches to your core here. But what I'm right. saying is that now that you now have redundancy, which is a good thing, because now if one cable were to fail, let's say something were to happen, and and uh, let's go something were to happen and one one connection were to fail this one um yeah let's go yeah sorry yeah you might want to turn off his uh webcam it's back oh can you you can hear me right back. it's breaking yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that yeah okay so in, in a situation like let's say something were to happen and something were to happen to this cable here you still have connection to your core, right? Yeah. Because that's a good thing. But now, because you have another extra connection going from this one to this one, now you have a loop. So what do we mean by loop? So what, what I'm just trying to do is break down what Remy said. Um, because if this computer here were to send out a broadcast, so a broadcast means I want to send a message to everyone on this network. So the broadcast will go outside of this port. So where will the broadcast go to? Uh, every port except its own. Ex exactly. So it will go to every port apart from this one. So when it goes to every port apart from this one, it will go up to this one, right? So when yeah. it gets up to this one, what would this one do with it? Send it to all other ports. Yeah, exactly. So to send it to all other ports, apart from the one that it came on. So that means it will come out from this port and come back here. So when it gets back to this one, what will it do with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send it out of every port apart from the one it came from. So to send it out of this port again, and now you have a loop, and you just keep going round and round and round, and the lights are going to be flashing, and everything is going to be flashing, and like what Remy said, very soon there's no more bandwidth on your network because a loop has taken over everything so that's like the explanation of what remy said here that if you have multiple so, connections yeah carry on 
for each additional broadcast to keep like going, keep increasing the broadcast storm and eat up more bandwidth. Yeah. So but like a single broadcast, if it just linked through. Actually, just one bandwidth. broadcast is enough to cause a broadcast storm. Just okay. One, just one thing, just one single <laughs> broadcast is enough to cause like a storm. But it will just keep going round and round and round and round and round like that, and it's not gonna stop. So the other reason I will say why we need spanning tree is because of this. There is no inbuilt um, loop prevention mechanism. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. So that's the other reason I'll say. So there's no inbuilt loop prevention mechanism at layer two. What do we mean by this? Um, sorry, just uh, what, what Mark said. Yeah, carry on, sorry. Whatever happens, yeah. the switch will flood out the information all of the ports yeah. apart from the uh, receiving port. Yeah. So even if STP or whatever uh, protocol runs, mm -hmm. it will flood out the information for all the ports. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to reflect to this. Do you, for, for Nick, do you mean like uh, even if it's outside the network? Sorry? Do you mean even no, if it's outside uh, of the VLAN? It's, it's It floods out all the ports except the port, but still within its VLAN or network, right? It, yeah. It uh, or is it across the whole VLAN. physical plane of the switch? So if, if we are communicating between VLANs, maybe uh, one VLAN just can't communicate the another VLAN, mm -hmm. which means that you can't ping the, uh, the another VLAN, but it will flood out the information. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. find the uh, um, destination. So it can cross into other networks on that possible uh, switch? Uh, remember, remember that um, broadcast is is blocked by uh, by router. So it's the yeah. same as VLAN. Broadcast is blocked by VLAN. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's only, it's only the switch that yeah. doesn't control it. I think. Yeah. But the issue here, so, so here's, the, here's the main issue here, I think. Carry on, Ferenc, sorry. Uh, so with inter-VLAN routing, you can uh, communicate between VLANs. Yeah. So if you if you create a, a router on a stick, it's easy. Yeah, but it's still gonna block block the broadcast. So yeah. What, what, so it won't still let the broadcast go out. But what will happen in this case is remember what we were discussing last week, Carlos, when we were talking about um the the caching system of switches. We we're talking about yeah. uh, store and forward. Do you still remember store and forward? Which one is the yeah. second one? Uh, cut through. Cut through, and then which one's the last one? Last no one idea. Is a bit, yeah, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit more tricky to remember. Anyone remembers the last one? So we have store and forward, we have cut through, then we have the last one, fragment free. Fragment free. Yeah, so we have fragment free, which is the last one. So the issue here would be the physical resources on the switch, because this switch has a limited amount of RAM, right? Has a limited amount of, of memory that it caches like the frames and then it forwards them. So imagine like there's a loop and there's just constantly frames just being stored in there. So all <laughs> the other thing on the other VLANs still won't be able to communicate because this one is like, the switch is like, basically I'm, I'm filled up, you know, I have no more space to take anything else. I'm just going to keep doing that till, till I go off. So the, <laughs> the other thing we mentioned is that because there's no inbuilt loop prevention mechanism at layer two, because this is a switch, right? Let's let's take this scenario. Let's take let's say this scenario. Instead of a switch, what we have is a router. We have a router. We have a router. And this router is connected to this router. This router is connected to this router. This router is connected to this router. And let's say for some reason, so this is just for illustration. For some reason, um, a packet is forwarded out of this router, goes to this router, comes back out here. And comes back out there and it keeps going round and round and round and round. What will happen to that packet? What will happen to that packet? It creates a loop. Yeah, it creates a loop. So what will happen to the loop that it's created? What will happen to it? So you just keep going round and round and round. What will happen to it? Shouldn't it be dropped after a while? 
very very good point Carlos because inside the packet there's a field the field's name is called anyone know what the field name is called TTL time, time to live, live. Yeah. so time to live what does it mean it means you have this time to live <laughs> it basically means you have this time to get to your destination otherwise you're going to be thrown away so if this packet on layer three now so this is not layer two on layer three if this packet goes here the time to leave is decreasing and it keeps going round and round eventually the time to leave will expire and this router will say sorry you've expired boom that's all you're gone but we don't have that in layer two we have that in layer three it's imbued inside the ip protocol we have the time to leave field which is sort of like it's not like a perfect loop prevention but it's sort of like prevent but for the switch there's nothing like that there's no time to leave it will just keep sending it till you physically go and power off the switch otherwise it will just keep going round and round and round and round and round and round it's not going to say okay that's it you're gone it will just keep going until someone goes to power off but if it's the router it will just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and eventually time to leave will expire and it will be dropped so that's why that's what we mean by the other reason is there's no inbuilt loop prevention in layer two that's why we need a mechanism to prevent loops in layer two so spanning tree the other one let's go a bit further is how does it work or let's put it another way uh, we said what does it do it prevents loop at layer three uh, sorry at layer two but then the other question which is the one that will uh, our discussion today will be based on will be how does it do this job how does spanning tree so let's go back to this scenario so let's go let's go back to this scenario yeah so let's say this switch is connected to this switch this switch is connected to this switch and this switch is connected to this switch now the same scenario plays that if there's a broadcast and goes out there'll be a loop and I'll just keep going round and round so how does spanning tree prevent this loop that's what we want to discuss mainly today so who wants to go first so how does spanning tree operate who wants to go first? what's the first thing that spanning tree does um I, I would think it has to know like what timing between each other no the timing huh? okay so who agrees with Carlos who disagrees with Carlos Ferenc what do you think do you agree or disagree how does spanning tree goes about you know preventing loop at layer two what's like what like the process that it goes through yeah Ferenc um Powell is making a point also Powell says it blocks one part okay Yep. So, any other idea? Um, let's say that um, he basically says that to one switch that when you receive when you receive a signal, you are not allowed to send that signal out. Basically, that's what Power basically said to it. Just, but you have you have to basically give them a specific number that they know that when they receive a a signal they're not supposed to forward that signal yeah yeah so basically yeah that's nice so basically mm -hmm. that's like the same the one that power mentioned which is blocks mm -hmm. so okay let's let's go a bit deeper now so Plus, how does the carry on Ferenc, sorry. Uh, it allocates a uh, root bridge root one thanks so now we're breaking it down so powell <laughs> and remy said spanning tree the way it's gonna prevent loop is it's gonna block one part but how does it block one part? How does it, okay? Let's go. Let's go this way. Let's do this method. Let's go. Let's bring up packet tracer, and let's have the same scenario that we have here, and let's go through it together. So, so that <laughs> that will help us to be clear. So let's go. We have packet tracer here. We have um, switch one or switch zero. Switch one and switch two. And then let's connect them to one another. Um, let's go. This one is connected to this one. And let's go. This one is connected to this one. Okay. 
so this is like the same scenario that we have in the diagram or a similar scenario so let's let's get some information from this one so um let's go show oh sorry yeah okay so let's see this one is that's the mac okay or oh, let's 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 start from here so um who wants to answer this so Ferenc can Remy says panning 3, the way it's going to work, is going to block one port. So, can anyone tell me which port panning 3 will block from this one? Which port will panning 3 block? So, again, the question is... I guess one with the worst, or... <laughs> blocks one port. So, the question is now this. Which port will it block in this scenario uh it will block the port which one have an alternate port which what i think power got it <laughs> power power says block port mean rather received only bpdu data is not sent and everything received is dropped first select root bridge yeah you're right power what, what power you said is right but now I want to break it down so 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 it's all it's all clear to all of us we want to break it down so can okay so power so my, here's my question my question is can you tell me so let's say let's put it this way let's come let's go here let's say this part here is part one this part here is part two this part here is part three oh, sorry it's part three this part here is part four this part here is part five and this port here is port six. So which port will spanning tree block? Can someone tell me just one answer? Which port will it block? They have uh, the first one that gets all the data. No six. <laughs> six. Who said six? Remy, you said mm -hmm. six. Why? Why six? Because it goes by the lowest port. The lowest port is the wood port. Good one, nice, nice one. So look, let's all look in the chat window and see what Powell mentioned. Powell said, if nothing is changed, tell me the MAC address rather than the port number. So in other words, from this scenario that we're seeing, there's no way you can determine the port that spanning tree will block. You need more information. Mm -hmm. So which information do we need? Powell said, tell me the MAC address. Okay, so now we'll tell you the MAC address. Let's go get the MAC address from the switches. So let's go. So here's, here's the, the MAC address of switch. <coughs> so let's copy this and let's go here. So this is the MAC address for this guy here. Yep. So let's go get the MAC address for the other guy too. Um, uh, come on, come on. Yep. So let's get the MAC address for this guy. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the MAC address for this guy. So let's get that one. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so the MAC address for this guy is this one. And let's get the MAC address for the last switch. So let's go last switch. Um, we need your MAC address. Yep, and let's get it's MAC address. Okay, so now we have the information that Powell has mentioned. Mm. So we have the MAC address here. So I'll throw out the question again. Now we have the MAC address. Which port will be blocked? <laughs> <laughs> Powell said port 3. So let's take a vote, a round vote. So who agrees with Powell? Port 3. Yeah. Sure, because his highest, right? I'm looking for the lowest value. <laughs> what do you think, Carlos? Uh, I assume it we're is... going over the value of the MAC address, and if it's higher, then it would be blocked first. Mm -hmm. Or, 
Or is it reverse? Uh, we're blocking the root, so the root has to be the lowest, so it'd be not that one. Uh, first off, we have to deter determine which is the root switch. So in case I can see, uh, I think the one with the MAC address 001 yeah. is the root. Let's see. The root switch. Yep. Okay. Okay. So right. both okay. both ports means port four and port uh, port five. They are uh, the designated. Uh, no, 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 no. Four and six are the designated uh, ports. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. And and then if we look at the five and two, they are the root ports. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who agrees with with Imran? Who agrees with Powell? What do you say, Ferenc and Mark? Mark has been quiet. Ferenc, what do you think? From this information, which port do you think will be blocked? I, and then we will look at uh, one and three, because one and three, the port number three is the higher. No, before that, we will see the MAC address. So, MAC address, yeah, that's. Yeah, it got me confused too at first, but. Uh... So I think I understand. Yeah, Ferenc, I want to hear your opinion. I want to hear. Thanks very much, Powell. <laughs> nice one, Powell. Nice one. So, Mark and Ferenc, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So, what, what's your thought on this? Which one do you think will block? Which part will block in this scenario here? I have no idea. I'm <laughs> 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 just going to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> no, no phone is, Mark. That's, that's one of the reasons why we're having this. Because we all learn from one another, yeah. Can I maybe re-explain it and uh, maybe you can see if I understand and maybe they'll pick yeah. up on it? Yes, please. Okay, so it's based on the lowest. If you can't determine, it's based on the lowest value of the MAC address. In this case, if you look left to right, 001 would be the lowest value in hexadecimal. So that switch all the way to the right is the root switch. Now the root switch is connected to the other two on ports 2 and 5. So those will be blocked because those are the ones that traverse to the root switch. And um, as an as a simple thing to, um, I think uh, Powell has break it down for us. But yep. if we if we were to consider which is our core switches, core network switches, and therefore we'll have to program those switches. Um, that we want to, to allow to forward packet, and those uh, we allow, I mean, those we want to allow to forward uh, frame, and the other one we allow we want to block frame. Yep. Okay. Good one. So let, let's let's go to it. Let's go to it now. So the very first thing that will happen when you have like the setup like this is BPDUs will be sent. Now, we'll try to break it down. Now, last week we mentioned something that one of the reasons why we're mm -hmm. having this hangout is to create like a, a relaxed environment where we can make things not complicated. So, because I see people, we can teach each other. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you remember the example we gave? Because basically we can come and I, two, two IT people can have a discussion and at the end of it, you leave the other person more confused. Because you can come and say, yeah, so we get the root bridge and BPDU, and after that we get PPTP, and then we get PPP, and then we get HDLC to go to this one. And then the guy is like, okay, hold on, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm more confused now than I was at the beginning. So when we say BPDUs will be sent, what does that mean? So what that means is that once you connect this switch to this switch, and this switch to this switch, and this switch to this switch, instantly, with spanning tree enabled, they start sending some information between each other. That information is called BPDU. In other words, let's say this is switch one, and this is switch two, and this is switch three. <coughs> switch one will be sending some information to switch two and switch three. Switch three will be sending some information to switch one and switch two. Switch two will be sending some information to switch three and switch one. And that information is called BPDU. BPDU simply means this, Bridged Protocol Data Unit. So that's Bridge 
protocol data unit and the information that it contains are simple the information it contains is this is my mac address so switch one is telling switch two hey this is my mac address switch one is telling switch tv this is my mac address switch two is doing the same thing switch two is doing the same thing so they are all telling one another their mac addresses one of the things that they are telling one another is the priority and we'll get to that one in a minute so the priority so switch one is saying this is not only my mac address but this is my priority switch tv2 is saying this is not only my mac address this is my priority so they are sending this information with one another and based on that information they will go to step two which is elect a root bridge so what that means is this so if switch one goes and says this is my my priority is let's say my priority is um the default priority does anyone know what the default priority is does anyone know what the default priority is uh 32,000 yeah yeah 768 so that's the default priority so this one is sending this information to this one and saying this is my mac address this is my default priority so when this one sees it it takes notes so this one also sends the information this is my mac address this is my default priority so here's the rule for electing a root bridge if i see any bridge that has a better value than me i start advertising to other switches this is the root bridge so what does that mean so in the beginning switch one will say switch one will say to switch three i am the root bridge <coughs> that's what switch one will say to root three so i'm the root bridge my mac is just for explanation purpose my mac is aaa my priority is three two seven six eight so that's what switch one is saying so switch two now says to switch one i am also the root bridge my mac is bbb my priority is four zero nine six the moment switch one receives this information from switch two that says here's my mark here's my priority and switch one compares it with his own mark and priority then switch one is like okay hold on you have a better value than me and because of that i will start i will start i will start i will stop um mentioning to other people that i'm the root bridge now this is what i'll start saying i'll start saying um hello i'm switch two switch one is the root bridge my MAC address is AAA, my priority is this one, switch, sorry, not switch one, switch two. Switch two's MAC is BBB and its priority is 4096. And the reason why he determined that switch two has a better value than him is because of this one, priority. So the election of the root bridge the first thing they determine is who has the lowest priority. So that's the first thing that they use. So they're looking who has the lowest priority. So this one goes, hello, I'm the root bridge. My mark is this one. My priority is this one. So the other one goes, hello, I'm the root bridge. Then it's like, hold on. You just told me you're the root bridge. You have a lower, ma you have a lower priority than me. Therefore, I'll start advertising. I'll stop advertising myself as the root bridge. I'll start advertising you as the root bridge. Then it goes further then maybe they come across another bpdu and the bpdu says okay how are you guys you know i have a better value than you i'm the root bridge my priority is zero it's not 4096 so instantly they all stop advertising themselves as the root bridge <laughs> or switch to as the root bridge they now start advertising this new information as the root bridge i'm not sure if that is clear is that clear carlos yeah mark mark is that clear, is that clear? yeah that is yeah so that's like the first thing that happens is we have to elect a root bridge what do we use to elect a root bridge we send bpdus to one another we send it by default every two seconds so i'm like this is my mac address this is my priority there's other information in there but this is my mac address this is my priority once i receive another bpdu that has a better value than me 
I start advertising that switch as the road bridge. And what I use to determine the better value is this. Number one, who has the lowest priority? So by default now, all these switches, they have the same priority. 32768, 32, 32, So that means they all have the same priority. So in other words, there's no one that has a better value. So if no one has a better value in terms of priority, they go to the next one is who has the lowest MAC address. That's the next one. So it's like, okay, if we all have the same priority, then who has the lowest MAC address? So the lowest MAC address will become the root bridge. So in this case, who do you think has the lowest MAC address? Switch one, switch two, or switch three? Who has the lowest MAC address out of these three? Three. Switch three. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, who agrees that it's switch three? Um, Carlos, yeah. do you agree or disagree? You agree? I agree. Yeah, Ferenc, do you agree? Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. And Imran, you agree? And Remy? And Carlos? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 So yeah, you just count from left to right, and that way you determine which one has the lowest MAC address. So in this situation now, the root bridge will be switch three. So based on this one, elects the root bridge. So they will all determine the root bridge is switch three. So that's what they will determine. So let's go look in our diagram whether this is accurate. So switch three is the one on the lower right corner. So let's go to packet tracer and let's go that switch two. So let's go to switch two and let's see what's going on. So let's go. Uh, so. Come on. Yeah, so yeah, switch two. And then let's see what switch one is saying also. And let's go. This is actually um, host name switch one. Still doing that. Let's see. Host name switch zero. And let's do show spanning tree so look at this so this is like what is what you typically find in the bpdu is this information here so you can see the information that switch zero will be sending switch zero in a diagram is switch one so it will be sending this information bridge id bridge id means this is my own value and inside bridge id says this is my mac address this is my priority and because it has received a better value than itself which is in this case switch tv it is advertising that as the root he said by the way also this is the root its priority is this is mac address is this 001c73a which is our switch three which is this one so if we go back to our diagram um yeah it's 001c73a so it's like this one is saying hey this is my details but this is the details of the bridge of the root bridge so uh, is that clear right Is that, is that clear or any questions regarding that? Uh, it's okay for me. Yeah. Okay. So let's go show. So this is on uh, on a switch three. And yeah, you can see this bridge is the root. So it's like, yeah, I'm the root. So all the other ones are advertising it as the root and it's advertising itself as the root. And why? Because it has the lowest MAC address. What will happen if I should change the priority of switch two to something lower than 32768. What will happen? They will elect a, a new uh, road bridge and then it will become because it has lowest priority because first they check priority and if they don't have, uh, if they have same priority, then they look at uh, uh, the MAC address. Nice. So if it's... Nice one. So let, let's actually do that. Let's go to switch one in this case. So how, so Imran, how do I change the priority for this guy? Uh, I think uh, uh, spanning tree. Oh, uh, yeah. 
And then, oh no, you can't see uh, VLAN priority maybe. VLAN. No, 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 no. That's not. That's not. So. Uh, is it interface command? Is it an interface command? Because I did it long time ago and uh, I really didn't revise it. Yeah. What, what do you think, colors and fairing? What do you think? And power? I know power knows the answer. <laughs> and Remy, Remy, what do you think? How do I change the priority? So I want to change the priority of this guy. How do I change it? <laughs> yeah. I have never configured your switch before. <laughs> we'll do it together. So actually, let's get let's get Remy to do this. Let me see if I can get you to do this. So Remy, do you, you have do you have team viewer on your machine? Mm -hmm. Do you have team viewer on your machine? Yeah, I I I have uh. Because if you have team viewer, I can give you the, the access to do this. So we go. So if you have team viewer, uh, let me know. I'll send you my details. I'll post my details so you can connect to my machine. Okay. So we've got spanning tree VLAN. So actually, you're right, Imran. Yeah, exactly. That's it, Powell. So you're right, VLAN. So if I go spanning tree VLAN 1 priority, and I go see, look at this. It says I can set the priority to increment of 4096. So let's say I change this priority to 4096, and I press Enter. Then if I go End, and I go Show spanning tree. Now look at this. Now switch one is saying, which is switch two in our diagram, I am the root bridge. Because now it has the lowest priority, even though it has the higher MAC address. But the first thing they will evaluate is who has the lowest priority. So if they all have the same priority, then they will use MAC address. Now here's my question to you. Um, is there any reason why you want to change the priority? Why don't you just let panning tree figure out any switch to be the default. Is there any reason why you want to be Because we have to put the most centralized uh, switch in the in the in the topology to be elected as a spinning tree or root bridge. Why? Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to why can't we just let it take take charge by itself? Because it's probably the most connected to the others. But you know if, even if it's the most connected to the others, what's the reason for that? I mean, we can we can have it decided, but let's say that the one with the lowest priority and or the lowest MAC address is not the one connected to the to the router. So we stack. No, we may stack. We may block all our connection to the internet. No, even with that, you still go to it. Even with that, you still find this way to the root and that. Mm -hmm. What what other reason do you think? I'll tell you something. Like it will be like a clue. Whenever you are electing a root bridge on your network, whenever you are electing a root bridge, there is no traffic that is passing on your network. So during the election process, when they are figuring out who is the root bridge, all your telephone calls won't be going through, mm -hmm. even though it's a short amount of time that they will use to determine who the root bridge. But when there's an election in progress, user traffic is not being passed. So that is enough reason to let you know as a system admin, I want the root bridge to be stabilized. I don't want it to be something that will be changing every now and then. Somebody comes and puts in a switch with a lower MAC address. All of a sudden, the root bridge is now that switch. You know, plus all the reasons that you've given. The reason that Imran gave is also a valid reason. But I just wanted to bring that one, that, that one up. Because whenever you're electing a root bridge, user traffic is not passing on your network. So you want it to be stabilized. You don't want the root bridge to be A, it is A today, tomorrow it is B, tomorrow it is A, tomorrow it is B. You want it to be something that is stable and something that is fixed. And the best way to fix it is to set... What do you think is the best way to fix it? If, if I want to fix my my um, my um, root bridge so that it doesn't change, what's the best way that I can do that? Set priority. To what? So priority to the lowest, or if you put it to zero, then it will always be the very good, the root very good one, Imran. Just set it to zero. Set your priority to zero. You know, you can't go lower than zero. You know, set your priority to zero. Just go root bridge. You know, sorry, spanning tree VLAN priority zero. <coughs> Although we'll come to that one in a bit more details later. So now, after electing the root bridge, so in this case, the root bridge is 
um, by uh, from the calculation we did earlier, switch three. So now switch three um, is the root bridge. So we have switch one and switch two. So again, which port will now be blocking from this one? Which port will be blocking? Are you talking about now after the priority or default priority? Um, up, no, before the priority. So we're not changing the priority. So the priority is all default. So now we are like we've determined the root so, bridge. So, so which the, from pers is perspective from which switch, right? Are you saying from switch one? Yeah. So which port will be blocked now? Uh, I said block uh, port one because they have default priority and then they will go to uh, MAC address and MAC higher is on a switch one, so they will not go further for uh, the highest port. So I think one will be the block. Yeah, who agrees with who agrees with Iman? I agree. Yep, Farang, yeah. you agree? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mark, you agree? Yep. Let me see yep. what. <laughs> Powell, Powell doesn't agree. So what? What? So um, what? What Imran said is that port one will block. So this is um before we this is before we change the. It says two port three. It says port three will block. So. Um, Powell hmm. said port 3 will block, Imran said port 1 will block. What do you think, Remy? Which port do you think will block? What, what, was, what, what, uh, what was the... Uh... The root bridge is still 3. Mm -hmm. So this is still the root bridge. So Ferenc says port 3 will block, Imran says port 1 will block. So which one will block? And why? Why will it block? <laughs> Powell, if you convert zero zero triple C, then you will see the C value has uh, A B C uh, eleven twelve conversion in a binary. Then I think then you will find it switch one has a higher. No, no, it's lower. No, it's uh, <laughs> C is uh, still lower than nine zero. Yeah, what do you say? So final answer, Carlos, who wants to be a millionaire? So final answer. Which one lower MAC address? Lower so which MAC one is still lower? So uh, port one won't be blocked. Yeah. So, I mean, if I see itself, I understand what someone was saying before, but 9-0 hex is dice. So your final answer the, is that you agree with Powell? <laughs> is that your final answer? Yeah. Yeah, Ferenc, the finance, are you agree with Powell? Or are you going with Imran? Oh, <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know spanning tree can be one of those topics that it can be, sometimes it can be a bit boring sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be fair, I've done uh, spanning tree um, almost a year ago. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I just I think I just saw there are two zeros, not three. So I think uh, that will be the higher. Yeah, Paul. I, I agree with Paul. So yeah. now I, you're. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I just saw actually in, that's in the end, other end of my screen. So I I, I, I didn't notice that it's two or three. Should, so I think I am agree with. You should uh, give you should give power a gift. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, what do you think? Do you do you do you go with Imran's former answer or Imran's new answer? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which way to go on this one. I mean, is it using the same um, uh, the lowest priority and the MAC address? So let, let's define where it uses. So we said number one is that they'll send BPDUs to one another. So right. the purpose of the BPDU is to elect a root bridge. And what they'll use to elect the root bridge are two values. Lowest priority force. If they all have the same priority, then lowest MAC address. So after they do that, they elect the root bridge. Now we know what the root bridge is. So then the next thing will be the root bridge won't be blocking anything. You know, the root bridge, the root bridge, all its all its ports are in forwarding. So it's not going to be blocking anything. So switch one and switch two. Exactly. Thank you very much, Power. Good answer, Power. So switch one and switch two has to determine first of all. What is the best way for me to get to the root bridge? What's the best way? So that's number three. So after determining what the root bridge is, so the other switches will determine the best way 
to get to the road bridge. So that's the next thing they will do. And how will they, what would they use to determine the best way to get to the road bridge? It's simple. They will use the... Ports that aren't blocked. The what? The unblocked ports. Not the unblocked port. They will use something to determine. I mean, there will be a criteria that they will use to determine. So switch one is like, okay, I can get to the road bridge via port two. I can also get to the road bridge via port one. Because I can go here and go here, I'll still get to the road bridge. Switch two, we go. I can get to the road bridge via port five. I can also get to it via port three. So you'll be like, which one is the best path for me to get to the road bridge? That's the next thing. And what they will use is the cost of the port. That's what they will use. So if the port is 100, sorry, let's start with, if the port is 10 megabits per second, the cost, anyone knows what the cost is? It's 10 megabits per second. Anyone know what the cost is? The cost for 10 megabits per second is 100. Uh, no, <laughs> no, power. 100 is 19. So 100 megabits per second is 19. 1 gigabit per second is 4. 10 gigabit per second is 2. So just remember this rule for spanning tree. The lowest always wins. So the, uh, the lowest one always wins, not the highest. So now what they're going to be trying to calculate is if this port is 100 meg, if all the ports are 100 meg, so this guy will go, it will only cost me 19 to use this part to get to the root bridge. If I want to use this part, it will cost me 19 here. And it will cost me 19 here. So that is 38. So we're going to be like, okay, the best part for me to get to the root bridge is from port 2. So switch, three, switch 2 to will go, okay, what's the best part for me to get to the root bridge? If I go via port 5, it will only cost me 19. If I want to go via port 3, it will cost me 19 here, then cost me 19 here. So that means it's going to cost me 38. Therefore, the best part for me is port 5. In other words, port 2 and port 5 won't be blocking because this is my path to the road bridge. So now we are left with two ports, the port 1 of switch 1 and port 3 of switch 2. So the, between the two of them, they have to decide one of us has to block. So it's going to be like, I'm not sure if that is clear. Is that clear? Of course, I think that then F1 will be blocked because it has uh, the higher cost value. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, is that clear at all? Yeah. 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 So that's the thing that they use. So they go, okay, um, we have the root bridge. Now, which what's the best part? So the other switches we go, now we know what the root bridge is. So what's the best part for me to get to the root bridge? If I have two ways to get to the root bridge, which one is the best one? So if I go down this road, it will cost me 19. If I go down the other road, it will cost me 38. Okay, thanks very much. I'll go for 19. So that means 19, the, the port 19 that takes me to the road bridge that costs 19 won't be blocking. But now the other two that are left, one of them has to block. And then they have to go through another process again. And the process of um, um, the remaining ports must determine the one that will block and the way that they use to determine that is number one is the is it the parity i think it's the am i right powell is it parity and mac address am i right Yeah, okay, yeah, I think so too. So I think it's parity and MAC address. Um, so parity and MAC address, that's what they use to determine which one will block. So which one has the lowest priority? If they all have the same priority, then they have to go to MAC address. So in this case, switch one has the lowest MAC address. 
sorry um let's see switch one has the lowest mac address therefore remember lowest always wins in spanning tree oh sorry yeah sorry yeah so lowest always wins in spanning tree so switch one will be i have the lowest mac address so i win in other words switch two you have to block port three so switch two has to say okay I lose this time so I have to block this one so it's not going to shut the pot down the pot will still be blinking if you go to look at the LED light it will still be blinking it's not going to shut it down it's just going to put a software block on it in other words it's not going to be forwarding traffic it's not as if it's going to shut it down completely it's just going to put a software block on it to say you're not forwarding traffic and that way we've prevented a loop so now if there were to be a broadcast traffic like we described in the beginning that's going round and goes here and comes out this guy is like no i'm blocking so now there's no loop at layer two so that's how spanning to your page so oh. yeah carry on uh i have a question so if switch two is trying to talk to switch one it's still gonna go through the route switch two or does it reevaluate wants to talk to switch one no it doesn't go to the route that's oh okay sorry yeah sorry it will go to the route for sure because this part is blocking. So it will 100% go through this one to get here. So for sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the, one of the reasons. Um, the good reason that Imran gave is that we want a switch that is centralized in our environment to be the root one. Because the last thing that you want as a network admin is a user comes and brings in their little Cisco switch from home. And they plug it into this part. And because you've not done your configuration very well, all of a sudden, this one starts sending PPDU to say, hello, I'm the root bridge, my priority is zero, my mic address is zero, 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 zero. And all of a sudden, all your traffic is now going, uh, you, you get the point. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen on your network, which is the one that we'll talk about next. But before we talk about that, let's do a quick... Uh, little, so this won't be a complex test. This is not a test of to just to test our knowledge. Let me delete all this. Let's delete. Okay, let me, let me leave this because we may come back to it in a minute. Let's do a quick short test. So let's go. Um, this one. Actually, let's go. Let's let's bring up um a switch that we copied earlier. Yep. Uh, but also, just I know it may be a little bit off base, but if you don't have any other ports with STP on it, mm -hmm. user plugs in a router somewhere else, it, it wouldn't matter, right? Yeah, remember that when, when you're talking, evaluated. first thing, remember that whenever we're talking about STP, which device are we talking about? Layer 2. Layer 2, which is what? A switch, right? So remember mm -hmm. that we're talking about a switch, not a router. So remember, we're talking about a switch, not a router. So your question is that... You know, saying, or, you know or, let's say a user plugs in, like in your example before, if a user yeah. plugs into a port that connects back to the root uh, switch, if the port that they plug into doesn't have STP enabled, it, that would prevent that from happening as well, right? Yeah, or if the switch doesn't... Uh, yeah, so exactly. So if okay. the port, so the port is, it's not as if the port doesn't have STP enabled. We'll talk about that because three things that I wanted to discuss today. I wanted to discuss about configuring and understanding STP. That's number one. So STP has only yeah. three, three facets. You have to know how to configure and understand it. Number two is you have to know how to protect it. Okay. So, because once you configure, so that's the, this is the sort of, sort of stuff you'll be doing when you're configuring in your network in the real world. First of all, you configure STP on your switch. STP has to 100% be configured on your switches if you have any redundancy in it. You have to have STP. Otherwise, you start hearing complaints, and the complaint will just be like, uh, we're, we're finding it difficult to access this one, and it can be really difficult to troubleshoot STP. <clears throat> I think uh, no, um, the Cisco, Cisco switches by default, uh, STP is enabled. Yeah, so by default. So, but then the, the, other, the other thing that, um, that Carlos was talking about is, you know, if, if, it's, if STP is not enabled on the port, so it's not as if STP will be enabled on the port, but there's 
there are ways that we can protect STP. So once you as an administrator, once you configure your root bridge, you know, you've set everything the way you want it, what you can do is set uh, protection on this port. Because you know, number one, there's no reason why a, this port, a switch should be plugged into this port, because this port goes to a user's desk. So there's no reason why a switch should be there. We can configure something called BPDU guard. So BPDU guard is like, is exactly what the name means. If I see any BPDU, I will shut down that port. So <laughs> in other words, the only thing I'm expecting is traffic from this port. I'm not expecting anything to be saying, hello, I'm the root bridge, my MAC address is this. If any BPDU comes in, I'll block it. So there are different ways that we can use to protect it. And you have to know that for the real world, because all your access switches, all the switches that users are plugging into, you have to have BPDU guard enabled on all of them if you don't want troubles. Because believe me, users will do interesting stuff. Yep. <laughs> we have stop switch with only one link to our network. It's not necessary to use STP. Yeah. Actually, like, actually, like, um, to what Powell is saying. So what Powell is saying is right. Actually, like, I know there's a, there's a new topology or new design that Cisco recommends. Uh, which is like a way of even limiting um, spanning tree use on your network. So between your core, your core switches, and your ax and your distribution switches, it's all layer three. So it's not layer two anymore. I've forgotten what the old technology, what the, what the old design is called. But Cisco has a new design model. Uh, so Powell is right in that. So okay. So here's the here's the little short test I want to do. So MAC address. A, A, A. MAC address BBB. MAC address CCC. So just, just, it's just like to test. It's not, we're not going complex. But you understand anyway. So let's say this is one. This is port two. This is port three. This is port four. This is port five. And this is port six. You've got two fives. Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. Um, so I've got one, two, three. Yeah, I missed four. <laughs> so let's uh -huh. get rid of this one and put four there. Uh, so let's say we got four here, and then we got five, and then we got six here, and then we got this. Uh, we got the priority of this guy is four, um, four zero nine six. We got the priority of this guy three two seven six eight got the priority of this guy to be zero. So can you determine which port we're blocking? So just take your time, just determine which port. No problem, it's Remy, no problem. So just can you determine which port in this scenario, which port will be blocking? One Port number one. So let me write names. Uh, so Imran says port one. Okay, so once you have your answer, let me know. Yeah, I agree. So, um, Carlos agrees. Yeah. I think that's the correct one. Yep, Mark agrees. Yep, who else? Thank you, being angry. <laughs> So, which one? Yeah, Remy agrees. So, Remy. No problems, Carlos, no problems. So, <laughs> Ferenc, what do you say? Same here. Same, Ferenc agrees. And of course, we know, we know, um, Power knows the answer. <laughs> so, Okay, so Mark, you want to explain to us the reason why one is the one that will be blocking. Can you take us through the beginning to the end of why you say one will be blocking? Alrighty, well, first you got to find the root bridge, right? Yep, good so one. Very good one, excellent. Compare MAC addresses, <clears throat> which would be, uh, the AAA would be the, the root, but then it looks at the priority. And then uh, CCC would have the lowest priority. 
So that would be the root bridge. Um, yep, okay. And then look again, let me see here, uh, at MAC address and priority between AA and BBB. Mm -hmm. And it looks like AA has the lowest um, MAC and, and priority. Um, AA has so the lowest is, MAC and priority, yeah. So this is where I'm confused, like why, why is port 2 not being blocked since that's the lowest one and yeah again remember lowest always wins wins means i forward in spanning tree so the lowest value always wins so win means i forward lose means you block so because okay. i'm the lowest i forward because you have higher values than me you block right yeah so you are absolutely correct in that Okay, that makes sense. I missed that part before. Okay. Uh, Remy says, assume they all have the same root cost. What do you mean by the same root cost, Remy? What do you mean by the same root cost? Your, your mic is muted, yeah. Yeah, just like we previously discussed, uh, let's say um, router one is uh, uh, sending um, 10, megabyte, 10 megabits per... Oh, okay, yeah, the path cost, yeah. 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 Um, no, in, yeah, good one, very, very good one. Because okay, let's do something else. So let's put some. So this same scenario, let's say this link here is um, 10 GB per second, mm -hmm. and this one is 10 MB per second, and this one is 10 MB per second. And so this one will test your knowledge <laughs> some more. Then um, <laughs> the per second. Carlos, you do this and you can leave. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> that one. will be how it will be working. Then they are working on a half duplex then. Yeah. So yeah. So still like. So let's say this one is actually no. Let, let's let's change something. So let's say this one that goes directly. This one is 10 MB per second. This one that goes um, this way is 10 gig. Um, so this part is not 10 MB. So let's say this one is 10 gig also. Sorry. So let's say 10 gig per second. Cause otherwise they will just be operating as uh, Imran said. So 10 GB per second. So now you have this scenario where this one is 10 MB per second. This one is 10 MB per second. This one is 10 GB link. Which port are we blocking? Six. 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 Who said six? Carlos. Carlos. Uh, why? Why six, Carlos? Uh, well, the link cost of 10 MB per second is 100. Yep. And where's 10 is what, like two? Uh, I think still it will be one block because if you count 10 gig, 10 gig, it's one one plus. If you go to 10, then it's 100, so it's 102. And if you go via six direct, then it's like 100. So it's it's still one will be the block. Yeah, the power, power second. Now you do it in packet tracer. Short all ports. Ask question and then do no shots it'll be faster yep i agree <laughs> let me let me do that why people are answering this so i'll start let me start doing that okay yeah carry on so which one so color says one we're blocking right is that what you say colors yeah that's what i originally said <laughs> yep so who, who, so any other answers yeah i said one will be blocking still one will be blocking still Anyone agrees or disagrees? Anyone disagrees that won't be blocking? Oh. Yeah. So in this case, this one will be the root bridge, right? It has a priority of zero, so it will be the root yeah. bridge. So all its parts will be forwarding. So this one has to determine what's the best part for me to get to the root bridge. This one has to determine what's the best part for me to get to the root bridge. So if I try to get to the root bridge, it will cost me 100 if I go this way. If I go this way, it will cost me two. But then if I come this way, it will cost me that's 100. One. So that's 102. This one will go, yeah, if I come this way, it's going to cost me 100. If I come this way, it's going to cost me um, 102. 
so it's still gonna say this one should be forwarding then these two has to decide which one will be blocking so in that case this one has the lowest priority so this one wins so this one will be forwarding and in that case this one will be blocking so you're right mm -hmm. one is the answer yeah yeah okay nice one so is that so uh, so we understand spanning trees some more right you understand what is actually going on with spanning trees yep yes okay so that's a nice idea power by the way so uh, yeah um let me just quickly brush rush through like the other part i want to talk about so i won't go into details just mention it we can study it ourselves and stuff um so in this case if i want to protect spanning tree on my network because i want i want it to be that if i select a root bridge and configure it i want it to be stable i don't want election to be taking place every five minutes you know i want this is the root bridge i want to define it as an administrator this is the root bridge on my network and that is the root bridge and i know this is the root bridge and nothing is changing and i want to protect my network and what are the ways i can use to protect spanning tree any ideas what are the things I can use to, to protect spanning tree? Sorry, can, can you repeat it again? I, I couldn't. Uh, so if, hear. if as an administrator, I have my network configured. Yeah, everything is configured. Everything is. So this I've selected my root bridge. I've configured my root bridge. I've lowered the priority, you know, so it has the lowest priority because I want it to be a switch that is central on my network. I want it to be a switch that is very powerful, that can handle all the traffic. I want it to be stable. So I've selected the root bridge on my network. I've configured it. How do I protect it so that it does, it's not changing every five seconds or every 15 seconds? What are the methods that I can use to protect it? Because that's So you want to do that, okay, you have a powerful switch and you want to be, uh, make him always, uh, always uh, the root bridge, right? Yeah. So sort of like want to make him always the root bridge. So yeah. You put priority zero. That will be the always. Okay. Lowest priority on your network. So that's that's absolutely correct. So that is like from the standpoint of configuration. But what about from the standpoint of protection? You know, because I don't want anybody to. I don't want. An, I don't want an admin. Because what happens? What happens in this situation, Imran? Think of this situation. So both of the guys came in exactly uh, with the same priority. With the same priority so of he, zero. He converts his priority to zero. Yeah, and then he has a lower MAC address. So how do I protect in that kind of a situation? So let's say one of the are, users here. Are okay. you talking about uh, port first in RSTB or? Yeah, you're bringing up good points. So you're bringing up good points. So port first. So port first. What does port first do? Because you mentioned it, so you have to explain it to us, Imran. So port first. It, it goes directly to not not to through the learning and listening, listening and learning state, and then forwarding it goes directly to the uh, forwarding state. So actually, I won't put part port first as a way to protect spanning tree. I will put port first at how to make spanning tree more effective. Then I'll add port first. So this is what port first means, guys, and what and what Imran mentioned. Port first means if I take a computer here, if I have a computer here, and um, you know, this, this is a computer, it's not a switch, right? It's a computer, it's sending traffic, it's not sending the PDU. If I have just panning tree configured and I plug it in here, what will happen is that even though this device is not a switch it will still go through all the faces of spanning tree spanning tree has a lot of faces what are the faces of spanning tree L listening learning and the forwarding good one listening learning forwarding and blocking blocking good one so let, let's let's even try to demonstrate that look at this situation let's bring your packet tracer so look at this situation so let's go um, let's delete let's delete this this one and if I go take a cable let's let's make it bigger take a cable and connect a cable from this one to this one now look at this can you see that they are both amber at the moment these two parts they are both amber right let's look at how long it will take them to move from amber so if I do I think it's 15 seconds. Yeah. Twice. No? 
Yeah, Kavi, what did you say? You should be twice 15. Twice? Yeah. You mean twice 30 seconds? You, you, uh, you mean 30 it, seconds? It's, it, it's around half a minute, how I know. Yeah, you mean 30 seconds? Yeah, I think it's 30 seconds. Yeah. So look at them. Um, so let's go. Yeah. So if I go, so let let's can let's delete this one again. And so let's delete this one. And let's plug in the cable again into switch two. So let's go under switch two and let's see. Let's just monitor this. Let's monitor. Show spanning tray. Now look at this listening. If I do show spanning tree again, still listening, still listening, still listening. Now it's changed to learning. Yeah, still going. Now still learning, still learning, still learning, still learning, still learning. Oh, sorry. Still learning, still learning, still learning. Still learning. What's he learning, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> What's he learning? He's learning MAC address. That's why it's learning. So it's listening, it's listening for, P for BPDU. It's like I'm listening, anything sending BPDU, it's like I'm learning what's your MAC address. Then after that, it changes to forwarding, now it's forwarding. Now, if you plug a computer in here, so let's take a computer, let's take a PC. So imagine this on your network, you plug a PC, um, so you take a new PC, come on. Yeah, we have a PC and let's plug a PC into this switch. Now look at that port, that port is also Hamba, right? Right, but this is not yeah. a switch. This is a PC. It's not participating in. It's not supposed to be doing anything relating to spanning tree, right? It's not sending PPDU or anything like that. But it still has to go through listening, learning, forwarding, and go through all the 30 seconds delay. So imagine your user comes in the morning, plugs in their PC, and they have to wait 30 seconds to listen for BPDU. You know that BPDU is not going to come out from this port. But yeah, you're going to spend time listening for BPDU. Then you're going to spend time learning the MAC address. Then you're going to go to forwarding after a long time. So what port fast does is say, see, there are some ports on my network that are not connected to switches. They are connected to computers. So these ports, the moment anything plugs into them, put them in forwarding mode immediately. Don't go through listening, learning, for, just go forwarding because they are not going to be interfering with spanning tree. So every port that you'll be connecting pieces to in your network you have to set them to port fast to be effective there are two ways to do it you can do it individually by port or you can do it globally on the switch so the way to do it individually or globally is this i can go on a switch and go globally and go spanning tree port fast and if i put question mark it says enable port fast by default on all access ports. So this will only work if I configure all the ports for static access ports. So I have to go through all the ports and say, yeah, no problem, Carlos, see you later. Yeah, so I have to go through all the ports and say, hey, you're an access port. Yeah, see you, Remy, no problem. I have to go through all the ports and say, you're an access port, and then configure spanning tree on it. Oh, sorry, and then configure spanning tree port fast on it. So that's the point of um, spanning tree port fast. So the one that we're talking about though is protecting it. So one way to protect it is BPDU guard. So BPDU guard will listen on that port for if any BPDU comes in. If any BPDU comes in, it disables the port. So that's that's like the number that is like one way is BPDU guard. One way is root guard also. So root guard is a bit different from BPDU guard. BPDU guard is if I hear any BPDU, I'm shutting you down. Root guard on the other on the other hand is if I hear any BPDU claiming to be the root, or if I hear any BPDU that is like, hey, I'm I've got a better value, then I'm going to shut you down. In other words, if you come in on the network and you're like, I'm not taking over the role of the root, I'm just joining your network, it will allow you. But any BPD, any BPDU that comes in on that port that says I'm the root, then it's gonna disable it. So that's root guard. And there's there's like others like loop guard and BPDU filter and all that kind of stuff.
So first thing, remember, you have to configure spanning tree. The next thing you have to do is you have to protect it using things like BPDU guard and root guard, so that if users plug into it on your network and plug a switch into your network, you are protected. They won't take over and become the root bridge. Then you have to tweak spanning tree using things like Podfast to make it more effective. So I'm not sure if that is clear. Is it clear? Is that helpful? Yep. Yes. So I think we'll probably pause there today. Anyone wants to do labs today? Or you're, you're, you, you want to go digest the spanning tree one before you start doing labs? Because <laughs> I think this is where we'll pause. We'll, we'll stop for now. I think I've, yeah, I think we should probably go digest, do yeah. digest yeah, digest the spanning tree a bit, just do a bit of reading. Um, let me post this one in the chat window. So it's a documentation from Cisco, um, regarding their implementation of spanning tree. So let me yeah. So here we go. So this one, good one. So it's a good documentation from Cisco regarding their implementation. Yeah. Uh, copy the link. Link yeah. So I'll post that in the chat window. Yeah, toy. Yep, yeah, so that's it in the chat window. And yeah, so we just got through this. Hey, we got Paul here. <laughs> we got Paul. Does anyone know Router Gods? You've heard of a group <laughs> called Router Gods? So Paul is Definitely. like the. Yeah, can you Mark? No, I was just saying I heard of him. <laughs> yeah, so Paul is like the. Actually, the. The reason why we have this hangout can be traced back to Paul. <laughs> because Paul is like the deputy organizer for Router Gods. And I used to try to attend the hangout and they used to discuss all this complicated stuff. <laughs> like they are discussing like all this CCIE level stuff and I'm like, whoa, I have absolutely no idea what these guys are talking about, but I'll listen a little. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, how come we don't have more and more stuff for like... You know, guys are just learning Cisco. I don't really know Cisco that much. And I remember there was a time that Paul gave me, it was one, more, one Sunday morning, and Paul was like, uh, yeah, if you want to do a lab, I can give you a lab. I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to be taking my CCA in very soon, so I'm ready for your lab. <laughs> Which was a mistake, by the way. <laughs> because Paul gave me the lab. Was it one hour? Or was it one hour that you wanted me to do the lab? Was it one hour or two hours? I think Paul gave me two hours to do the lab. And I think I was there for like eight hours or probably 10. <laughs> was it eight hours? I think I was there till like 10 p.m. in the evening. I started like 9 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah, so more than 10 hours I was there. Because Paul, Paul said, don't use Google. Don't use anything. Don't use Google. <laughs> yeah, just use your knowledge and the commands and just carry on with it. But I think after like, after maybe 30 minutes, I broke that I just went to Google. But even with Google, I wasn't able to finish that lab. <laughs> but but I've already challenged Paul to 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 a contest now to say I will break your lab easily. <laughs> <laughs> easily, believe me, Paul, your lab. Be actually, we should we should get you to to come organize a lab for all of us one of these days. Just give us a CCNA level lab. You know, don't put any CCMP stuff in it. Just CCNA level lab. And I guarantee you, I will break, I will, I will, I will, fit, I will make um, it look. David. Yeah, carry on. Have you seen the the new workbench uh, ICDM one readiness test? No, actually, I need to because I've had workbench before, but I've actually never ever used this. Just check it out. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not that easy. How it seems. Ah, okay. I will do. I will. Because uh, you need uh, not pool. You need. Uh, Many many ACLs. Uh, what else? ACLs with well-known ports. Mm -hmm. Then um, you need uh, OSPF one, uh, OSPF two and three. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> and is, yeah. It, is it like a comprehensive lab or is it individual and, lab? And Brandon was so cute because he just told that if you can do this within an hour. I'm sure that you can pass your ICDM one. Yeah. What the heck is that? You can't do that with all the security configs and everything within an hour. Yeah. Uh, so actually, okay. So Imran is asking for it. So it's called GNS three workbench. Yeah, the new, the newest one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll check that out. I'll check that out. 
just but, check it out. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to be a bit confusing. <laughs> I will. I'll do that. Yeah. So, so yeah. If anything that can help me to show Paul that his lab is not as difficult as he thinks. <laughs> Paul says my lab is way tougher. I'll, I I guarantee you, Paul. You send it to me, Paul. <laughs> I guarantee you, Paul. I'll make your lab look easy next time I take it. I guarantee you. Then when I was doing it, that was like more than a year ago. You know, I was still getting into Cisco. You know, now I know my CCNA stuff, so I guarantee you, I'll I'll break. I'll make your lab look easy. Um, <laughs> well, I, well, I thought that I'm gonna uh, create an online based on that uh, ICDM one yep. readiness test. Yep. But with, uh, I mean, to separate voice and data. Yeah. Uh, create some uh, ERGRP uh, autonomous systems. Yeah. I mean, for um, what's that? Area border routers and and everything. Yeah. So so just to make sure, you know. Yeah. Uh, guys, uh, I also I studied in Net uh, Net Academy and uh, I have uh, the labs like you know before you go to the next module. Mm -hmm. They have to take your test and then actually teach your mate and scenario and ask to do that. that, that. So if somebody needs, I can, I can share that. I will look it and I can share it. Maybe that's also help. Mm -hmm. I have to, I think, translate it because it will be in Dutch. Uh, but I can do that, you know. The, the thing with, can I tell you one thing that I learned is that the thing with those, those labs are really, really good. But the thing with them is everything is separated. So, you know, you do... Cisco, you do OSPF lab, you do EIGRP lab, you do spanning tree lab, you do, you know, each lab individually. But now it's different when everything comes together, where you have to put everything together on one network. I think, I think many people struggle more with that than if it's like individual labs where you're just configuring one thing. And if, then if you're configuring many, you know, everything in a single lab. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No problems. Hey, nice, nice hanging out with you guys today, man. So we'll, we'll meet again. So I don't think there's any hangout next week. Let me see what we're what we're discussing next. Uh, so actually, yeah, we'll be taking that that one down. But let me see. Let me see what we'll be discussing the next time. Um, cause yeah, cause all the all the in, all the labs, the event already advertised. Oh, sorry, the invitations have been sent out in the on the community page it says advanced stp yeah okay yeah so we'll be doing so we'll be doing more stp next time but we'll be discussing things like uh pavilion spanning tree and things like rapid spanning tree so we'll go in a bit more details than what we did today